Good and blessed morning to you all, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ. This morning, we're going to focus, uh, focus upon the Mark and Gospel, chapter uh, 10, verses 17 through 31. And our meditation title is, What Must I Do to Inherit Eternal Life? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Here's the story about a middle-aged man who uh, came to his pastor to get some help to make his life more meaningful. He has been depressed and feeling his life is flat and meaningless, though he has been quite successful and earned a considerable amount of money. He thought that he should be getting more pleasure out of his success and trying to figure out, figure out what to do. His pastor, while listening to him, remembered something good for this man, which actually Carl Manninger, the famous American psychiatrist, uh, had once mentioned, you, when you are feeling blue, when you are feeling blue, you should get out of the house, go across the tracks find someone in need and help them, unquote. The pastor shared this advice from Dr. Menninger with him and said, perhaps you should use your money to help people in need. Give some of it away. This man heard and thought for a moment and with a wry smile on his face said, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm that desperate. In our Mark and Gospel uh, today, there's a young rich ruler who was uh, diligently searching for his eternal life. So he came to Jesus and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know, you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witnesses. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. This young ruler replied, teacher, I have kept all this since my youth. Jesus looking at him and loved him and said, you lack one thing. You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When this young man heard this word, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many Positions. He had many positions. Why do you think Jesus loved this man? Well, I guess he was quite honest and faithful in his life journey. He must have not killed anybody. He must, must have not committed adultery. Yes, he must have not stolen anything. He must not given any false witnesses. Yes, he must have not defrauded anybody of anything. Jesus knew such a lifestyle of this man and loved him and he heard his answer. But Jesus also knew, Jesus also knew something fundamental and critical was lacking in this young man. So he encouraged him said, saying, you lack one thing, go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. This young rich ruler, when he heard this advice, as the text says, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many positions. This young man, like the successful man who came to his pastor above, 
failed to follow Jesus Christ to the end of emptying and sacrificing himself due to his many possessions, many earthly possessions. Jesus' message to this young man is, you must get hold of God as your first priority over your earthly possessions. Your money, your possessions cannot, will not give you the eternal life which you wish to grab, but God alone, your author of life. Richard Rohr, in his article titled, Unknowing, double dot, the God particle. Unknowing, double dot, the God particle. Utilizes, utilizes the imagery of water uh, drops as a metaphor for God's indwelling presence in our souls. Saying, let me quote, water drops in the atmosphere are created when water vapor condenses on tiny particles of dust. At the center of every water drop is a particle. Similarly, every soul, every human soul is wrapped around a particle of God. But this particle, although small, is boundless. Since the infinite God is not confined, God is found at your innermost center. God is found at your innermost center and beyond. It is not just that God dwells inside you, but God is at the center. God is at the center of your spiritual makeup. An integral and enduring part of who you are. Who you are. God is not added to you, but you are added to God. God is the foundation unto which your soul is built. Everyone you meet, everyone you meet is also a God particle wrapped in a soul, unquote. In the eyes of Jesus, this young rich man, has something, this young man has something critical lacking to grab eternal life because his abundant earthly possessions were blocking his center of spiritual uh, makeup. His soul was fully wrapped with a particle of money, a particle of materials he owns rather than with the God particle. In other words, this young man was serving his money from the center of his inner being. This was why he was shocked and left Jesus when Jesus said, you lack one thing, go sell what you owe and give the money to the poor and you will have a treasure in heaven, then come and follow me. Well, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, here is the very formula. Here is the very formula of a relationship which Christ Jesus is providing for this young man seeking eternal life. That is, that is not his faith in, in not in his faith, faith in his money and earthly possessions, but his true and living faith in God, the author of life, and in Christ, his Savior and Lord. John Killinger, a Presbyterian pastor, on one occasion was attending a, uh, a conference in Texas when a woman came running up to him. She said, do you know what I uh, used to be, pastor? The conference place was a uh, disciples of uh, Christ the church. So this pastor thought she might have been something 
like a Methodist or a Baptist. But she said, no, I wasn't any of those. I wasn't any of those. I was a uh, professional gambler. She told him about uh, going to Las Vegas with $5,000 in her pocket and watching that grow to $109,000 at the uh, gambling tables. She said, I bet that $109,000 on one ton of the wheel. That was the biggest risk I had ever taken in my life and I lost. Then she said, since then, I have made an ever greater risk than that. Someone told me that God loved me and that his son Jesus died for me. And that Jesus wanted to live within me. So I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and the Savior. That was the biggest risk I have ever made in all my life. Unquote. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know the commandments. I have kept all this since my youth. You lack one thing. Go sell what you own. Give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. My dear friends in Christ, Jesus' crystal clear message to this young man in these lines is, first, grab the heavenly treasure in order to possess, in order to, in order to grab your eternal life. This heavenly treasure is none other than your living and true faith in your God, the author of life, and in Christ Jesus, your savior and Lord of the resurrection, simply because, simply because you're faithful, your faithful practices of God's commandments, that is, you are God's kingdom lifestyle. In other words, your good works in your day-to-day -day life journey here and now is the very outcome, the very fruit of your living and true faith in Christ Jesus, your Savior and Lord of resurrection. That is your eternal life here and now and beyond. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord's resurrection life, eternal life, be with you now and always and beyond. Amen.